Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a A-level question from paper 3, variant 31, May-June 2019, question 2, based on partnership. The question states that Jenny and Thomas are two sole traders. Their statement of financial position at 31st March 2019 were as follows. Jenny, Thomas, non-current assets for Jenny is $150,000, for Thomas it's $90,000. Current assets which consist of inventory for Jenny is $27,500, for Thomas is $11,000. Trade receivable for Jenny is $17,500 and for Thomas is $6,500. Cash and cash equivalents for Jenny is $9,750 and for Thomas is $3,750. Total assets for Jenny is $204,750 and for Thomas is $111,250. Capital and liability capital accounts for Jenny is $170,000 and for Thomas is $100,000. Current liabilities for Jenny is $34,750, for Thomas is $11,250. Total capital and liabilities for Jenny is $204,750 and for Thomas is $111,250. They agreed to merge their businesses into a partnership with effect from 1st April 2019. The terms of merger were as follows. The value of non-current assets of both sole traders has increased by 10%. The inventory was valued at $27,000 for Jenny and $10,000 for Thomas. Both sole traders expected 5% of the trade receivable to be written off. All other assets and liabilities except cash and cash equivalents were transferred to the partnership at their book value. In the ABIT of the question, we are asked to prepare the revised capital account of each sole trader at 31st March 2019 to show the transfer to the partnership. Before making the revised capital account, let's do the working for the adjustments from 1 to 4 in the working notes. The first adjustment given states that the value of non-current assets of both the sole trader has been increased by 10%. The amount for non-current assets which is given in the statement of financial position for Jenny was $150,000 times 10% which is the increase in the rate of non-current assets we get the value as $15,000 for Jenny. In the same way for Thomas it was given as $90,000 times 10% so the amount of increase in the value of non-current assets for Thomas will be $9,000. In the second adjustment it is given that the inventory was valued at $27,000 for Jenny and $10,000 for Thomas. It was stated in the statement of financial position the inventory for Jenny was $27,500. However, after revaluation, it is reduced to $27,000. Hence, there is a reduction in the value of inventory for Jenny after revaluation, and the value is $500, which is lesser than the previous value. And for Thomas, it is $11,000 minus $10,000. 11,000 was given in the statement of financial position and 10,000 is the value of inventory after evaluation. Hence, there is a decrease of $1,000 for inventory of Thomas after revaluation. In the third adjustment, it is given that both sole trader expect 5% of their trade receivable to be written off. That means they are going to reduce their trade receivable by 5%. For Jenny, the value of trade receivable given in the statement of financial position was $17,500 times 5% which is the reduction in the trade receivable or which is the amount which has to be written off and we get the amount as $875 which has to be written off from the trade receivable for Jenny after revaluation. For Thomas, the value of trade receivable given was $6,500 times 5% which is the amount to be written off. We get the amount as $325 which has to be written off from the trade receivable after revaluation for Thomas. Based on the calculation of adjustments which we have done for 
1 to 3 we are going to make the revaluation account revaluation account is a nominal account and the rules are debit all the expenses and losses credit all the incomes and gains we are going to start with the non-current asset increase in the value of non-current asset is again hence it is credited here as fifteen thousand dollars and decrease in the value of inventory is a loss and hence mentioned on the debit side irrecoverable debts that is the trade receivable which have been written off is a loss hence it is debited here as eight seventy five dollars we are going to balance the account by taking fifteen thousand dollars and we are going to subtract five hundred dollars and eight seventy five dollars we get the balancing figure as thirteen thousand six twenty five dollars which will be transferred to the capital account as it is debited here it will be credited in the revised capital account to complete the double entry for this transaction then we are going to make the revaluation account for thomas in the same way as we have made for jenny we will start with the non-current assets which will be credited here as nine thousand dollars and the decrease in the value of inventory and irrecoverable debts which are losses will be debited here we are going to balance the account by taking $9,000. We are going to subtract $1,000 and $325. We get the balancing figure as $7,675, which will be transferred to the revised capital account. Then in the last adjustment, all the other assets and liabilities except cash and cash equivalent was transferred to partnership at their book value. Cash and cash equivalent for Jenny is $9,750 and Thomas is $3,750. And as they are not transferred to the partnership account, they are going to be withdrawn by the individual sole traders. Now let's make the reverse capital account for Jenny. To start with, capital and liabilities will have the opening balance on the credit side, whereas assets will have the opening balance on the debit side. Hence, I have posted balance brought down of $170,000 for Jenny on the credit side. Then we have revaluation profit, which was debited in the revaluation account. Here it is credited and this complete the double entry for this transaction. Furthermore, it was uh, stated that Jenny and Thomas had withdrawn the cash and cash equivalent. Capital account is a personal account, debit the receiver, credit the giver. As Jenny is receiving this cash, hence it is debited. Then we are going to balance this account by adding $170,000 plus $13,625. We get $183,625. From there, we are going to subtract the cash as $9,750. We get the balancing figure as $173,875. This will be transferred to the partnership capital. In the same way, we are going to make the account for Thomas. Again, we are going to write the balance brought down on the credit side of $100,000, which was mentioned in the financial statement before the merger. Then again, we have already made the revaluation account for Thomas. Their amount was debited and now it is going to be credited to complete the double entry for this transaction furthermore it was also mentioned the cash and cash equivalent was withdrawn by thomas as thomas is a uh, thomas capital is a personal account debit the receiver credit the giver as thomas is receiving this hence it is debited and then we are going to balance this account by taking one hundred thousand dollars plus seven $1,675 we get a total of $107,675 from there we are going to subtract $3,750 we get the balancing figure as $103,925 which will be transferred to the partnership capital further additional information is mentioned the new partnership commenced on 1st April 2019 with the total opening capital of $360,000 in the ratio of Jenny 2 and Thomas 1 each partner introduced cash to achieve this. In the pivot of the question, we are asked to calculate the amount of additional cash that each partner need to introduce. So, it, here the total amount of capital which will be $360,000 and out of this, Jenny will contribute 2 and Thomas will contribute 1. Hence, the share of Jenny will be $360,000 times 2 by 3. So, the value which we get is $240,000. Out of this, Jenny had already transferred some amount when we have made the capital account. $173,875 was already transferred by Jenny. So, from $240,000, we are going to subtract $173,875. The value which we get will be $66,125, which will be the additional ca cash which jenny will introduce in the partnership and the, in the same way for thomas 
the value will be $360,000 times one third which will be equal to $120,000 and out of this Thomas have already transferred $103,925 so we are going to subtract that value we get $16,075 and this will be the additional cash which Thomas will introduce in the business to fulfill his share of capital. In the C bit of the question, we are asked to prepare the opening statement of financial position of the new partnership on 1st April 2019. So let's do the working notes before making the opening statement of financial position. We will start with non-current assets. It was mentioned the value of non-current assets for Jenny was $150,000 before the merger. However, due to the merger, this was revalued and it was increased by 10% which will be equal to $15,000. In the same way, for Thomas, the value was $90,000 and an increase of $9,000 was done because of revaluation. When we add this all together, we get the value as $264,000 as total non-current assets. Then for inventory, it was mentioned that during the merger, the inventory was revalued and for Jenny, the value was $27,000 and for Thomas, it was $10,000. So the total will be $37,000. Trade receivable, it was mentioned the trade receivable for Jenny was $17,500 before the merger. However, during the merger, there was a 5% return off in the value of trade receivable, which will be $875. So from $17,500, if we subtract $875, we get the value as $16,625. In the same way for Thomas, it will be $6,500 minus $325. We get the value as $6,175. When we add this up, we get $22,800 for trade receivable. And in the B bit of the question, we have calculated that some cash was introduced by the partners in the partnership firm. For Jenny, the value was $66,125 and for Thomas, it was $16,075. So when we total this up, we will get $82,200. And for current liabilities, it was mentioned for Jenny, the value was $34,750. And for Thomas, it was $11,250. So the total will be $46,000. So with this, we have done all the calculations which are required to make the opening statement of financial position. Now let's make the statement of financial position at 1st April 2019, which will start with assets. And in assets, we have non-current assets, which was calculated in the first working notes as $264,000. Then we have current assets in which we have inventory, which was calculated in the second working notes, trade receivable, which was calculated in the third working notes, cash and cash equivalent, which was calculated in the fourth working notes. Once we total it, we get the total current assets as $142,000. And when we add the non-current assets as and the current assets we get the total assets as four hundred six thousand dollars then we have capital and liabilities in this we have capital and in this we have Jenny's capital which was calculated in the B bit of the question as two hundred forty thousand dollars and Thomas capital which was calculated as one hundred twenty thousand dollars in the B bit of the question when we add this we get the total capital as three hundred sixty thousand dollars then we have current liabilities in current liabilities we have trade payable which was calculated in the fifth working notes and when we add the capital total capital and the total current liabilities we get the total as four hundred six thousand dollars which will be the total capital and liability as both the value of total assets and total capital and liability tallies with this we are done with this part of the question Furthermore, additional information is provided which states that partners agreed to take equal salaries of 10,000 per annum, the residual profit which to be shared in the ratio of 2 is to 1 respectively. It is expected that the profit before appropriation for the first year's trading will give a return of 13.5% on the total capital balance. The average profit of Jenny over the last three years as a sole trader was $35,000 per annum. In the first part of the debate of the question, we are asked to calculate Jenny's total share of expected profit for the first year of trading. So let's first find the expected profit. So the information which is given for this is here, that is the return on capital 
employed will be 13.5 percent and this will be on the total opening capital balance which was mentioned in the b weight of the question as three hundred sixty thousand dollars so let's use the formula for return on capital employed which is equals to the expected profit for the year times 100 divided by the capital employed let's substitute the value that is 13.5 is equals to expected profit times 100 divided by three hundred sixty thousand dollars once we take this $360,000 to the other side and divide it by 100, we get expected profit is equals to 13.5 times $360,000 divided by 100 and thus the value for expected profit will be $48,600. Moreover, it is given that the residual profit were to be shared in the ratio of 2 is to 1. So let's make the appropriation account to find the residual profit. Here we'll start with the profit for the year which we have calculated here as $48,600 and from there we are going to subtract the salaries which is mentioned here that the partners agreed to take equal salaries of $10,000 per annum. Hence Jenny's salary $10,000, Thomas salary $10,000. If we add this we get $20,000 which we are going to subtract from the profit $48,600 we get the residual profit as $28,600. It is also stated that this will be shared in the ratio of 2 is to 1 that is Jenny's share will be 2 divided by 2 plus 1 which is 3 hence Jenny's share will be 2 third therefore the share of Jenny's profit residual profit will be 28,600 times 2 by 3 which will be equal to 19,067 dollars and it is also stated that she is receiving a salary therefore Jenny's total share of expected profit will be $19,067 plus $10,000 which is her salary and will get the total value as $29,067. In the second part of the question, we are asked to state one advantage and one disadvantage to Jenny of forming the partnership. One of the benefits which Jenny will get because of the formation of partnership is access to more capital. The total opening capital of the firm is $360,000 whereas Jenny is just contributing $240,000. And the rest of the capital, which is $120,000, is contributed by Thomas. And with the formation of partnership, Jenny will have access to this capital as well. However, she will have a drawback of sharing the profit with Thomas. You see, as a sole trader, Jenny is earning $35,000 per annum. Whereas, after partnership, the first year profit which she will earn will be $29,067. Hence, there will be a reduction of profit from $35,000 to $29,067 which is a reduction of $5,933 and this will be the major drawback which Jenny will face with the formation of partnership. Next we are provided with additional information. The partners are considering computerizing their accounting system. In the EBIT of the question we are asked to state two advantages and two disadvantages to a business of forming the computerized accounting system. The benefits which the business will get will be speed, accuracy and efficiency because of the computerized accounting system when compared to the manual accounting system. However, there will be certain drawbacks as the firm is going to install the computerized accounting system for the first time. There will be certain costs like the hardware costs, the software costs and the cost of training the staff. Furthermore, there may be opposition from the staff because they need to be trained in the new kind of accounting system. and they may fear that they may not be able to acquire the skills required and moreover the data may be corrupted which may be because of viruses hack or data theft and this may be the drawbacks of computerized accounting system with this we have completed this question thanks for watching my videos and have a great life